An engineering change order or an ECO is a form that documents a change to an object or a process. The ECO allows you to identify the scope of the change, the reason why there needs to be a change, the justification for the change, and the risk assessment for that change. The reason is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically you or someone has identified a problem or an improvement to an object or a process. Your job is to explain the change as clearly and concisely as possible. It is essential to understand your audience when writing the reasoning. Explanation should be written in a way that anyone can understand it, even without a technical background. However, the explanation should not be overgeneralized. Avoid all overgeneralizations as much as possible. This includes very vague words or very broad statements that have no purpose or just feels like filler. And to help the reader, it's probably pretty good to give some sort of background to what change you're trying to do. This could be a brief a statement of saying, oh, this is what the process does, or this is what the object does, and we're affecting the, that function or process by doing this change. And it's very brief, very simple. If you have some trouble explaining the reasoning, it's more than likely you don't have enough background on the change. So it is best to keep asking why. Try to figure out that root cause of why there's a problem or maybe there is a need for an improvement. So I'm gonna take you through an example for an ECO. Um, for this example, we'll say we have a subassembly for an AC dashboard in a vehicle. And the subassembly is pretty straightforward for the sake of this example. It contains the dashboard itself, a label, and three knobs to control AC settings within the vehicle. And a problem occurred when we received those labels. Uh, we received those labels and we had our receiving inspection department um, inspect those labels to make sure they are made to spec before we apply or send them to production. During inspection, they found uh, that the labels were misprinted. The labels are supposed to look like this, but we received them like this. So the temperature colors were swapped, which is not too big of a deal, at least in this scenario. But we continued our root cause investigation by just keep asking why did this happen. So now we try to figure out why this happened. So we just keep asking why, perform our root cause analysis until we get to a point where we need to change something. So during our whole investigation, we figured out that the root cause was that our purchasing department sent our supplier a grayscale drawing or a black and white drawing. The drawing did know all the specified colors for the labels, however, it was difficult for them to figure out which color went where due to the grayscale. So we found our problem and our way of correcting that is to make sure that we send the supplier a colored drawing. We just simply have to update our supplier, update our purchasing department, as well as potential document control uh, representatives. So now that we have a background of what went wrong and what potentially we can do to fix it, we can write our reasoning. So here's an example for some reasoning for this given scenario. AC dashboard label indicates hot or cold air flowing to the cabin of the vehicle. Receiving department rejected misprinted AC dashboard labels. Colors of the hot, red, and cold blue indicators were swapped. Drawing of label was documented in black and white or in grayscale. Purchasing department sent the black and white drawing to the supplier. Drawing is being updated in color to clearly indicate label colors. So that is very brief, very easy to understand, very straight to the point. Again, avoid any kind of fluff. Don't just say drawing needs to be updated and that's it. You need to be a little bit more detailed, but not too detailed where it confuses someone. The justification of the change is basically why the change is needed. There may be problems within a company that may not need any attention at all simply because it's not worth it in terms of business sense. Uh, there's other opportunities to fix it later. Um, it's not physically possible or feasible that we can fix it now. Um, and it's simply all you have to do is think about what if we don't change this problem, if it is a problem, or maybe not improve something, what does that cause the company or any other departments within the company or the customer or suppliers? Uh, your goal is to figure out what would happen if we just let this 
problem or non-improvement keep going on? Simple questions would be, what can this problem lead to if it were a problem? Is this going to be a big business expense? Is this going to lead to unhappy customers? Are there going to be any harmful or fatal accidents? Basically, you're already looking at the risk assessment of things, but this is the risk assessment of the thing that hasn't been changed yet. So don't get this confused with the actual risk assessment of the change. That is the slight nuance that I was talking about earlier. The justification focuses on the risk of something not being changed and you identified it. The risk assessment later on would be the risk of the change that did happen. So here's an example of a justification. Label misprint is a business expense regardless of supply or credit. Misprints increase production lead times. Ship dates can potentially be extended. Potential rework orders are required to fix finished AC dashboard subassemblies. Label misprints can mislead end user operating AC dashboard. Incongruous information pertaining to the instruction manual. Drawing update is required to ensure received labels meet production timeline and design intent. So I basically listed off all the things that can be potential risk, whether it be a business expense or some external problem that might happen with our supplier or a customer. And at the end, I ended it why we need to fix that by updating the drawing or what I'm trying to change, which is the drawing. So for the risk assessment, please don't confuse that with a the justification. There is the slight nuance that I explained earlier. Just keep that in mind. So your goal in the justification is to explain the risk once the change is implemented. You need to try your best to forecast any kind of potential risk that can happen. Obviously, you cannot predict the future, but you can make sound judgments about what the change can potentially do. If you do have a scenario where there is legitimately no risk uh, to a change, which is very unlikely, um, then you just explain the benefit of that change. Usually when that happens, you're simply just fixing a typo or a small doc document change that only pertains to the documentation, not necessarily the part or function or process within the company. But even those small things can be potentially huge things because they can compile throughout all the processes or procedures within the company itself or even externally. And if you can, uh, just evaluate the risk. It doesn't have to be on a scale or anything, but something verbal such as this is minimal risk or this is high risk or moderate risk. And then just gauge that with your reasoning on why that's high risk. And if you're still having difficulty writing the risk, it is best to understand the full scope of the change. Um, how does this uh, change affect other departments? Do, they, do other people need to be trained? Do they need to be updated with something? Do people need to learn new processes, new tools, how to operate new things, stuff like that. Once you start thinking uh, how things are interconnected with each other, then you can under understand the risk better when the change is implemented. So here's an example of a risk assessment. Minimal risk is foreseen. Drawing annotates component colors on the label to mitigate the risk of the document printed in grayscale. Document control and purchasing departments were trained to store and send colored documents if color is pivotal information. Examples include labels and instruction manuals. Misprinted labels were quarantined and scrapped before entering stockroom and production. Relevant suppliers were updated with colored drawings. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, pretty brief, and anyone can understand it. So hopefully this video has helped you writing the ECO. I know that your ECO may be more in depth, it maybe has way more steps or requirements for even to be uh, released or even accepted or signed, but this is just a basic way of just going through the basic elements of an ECO, which are the reasoning, justification, risk assessment, and so forth. And in my opinion, this was one of the most challenging things uh, when encountering my first job in engineering. Uh, it did take time. It took me roughly six months just to get the hang of it. I in no way perfected the craft of writing uh, engineering or technical documents. But in my personal opinion, one of the things that did help me is really understand the processes within the company and understanding the product that you're selling and making. Um, understanding all those things, you start getting a, a better gr a grasp of what is going on and how to explain what is going on and how it's going to affect everything else within the company.
And trust me, when I first started, I wasn't fully aware of all the different procedures, different tools, different things, uh, different products, the insane amount of models, um, potential that we sell to customers, all the external suppliers, all that stuff. I, I wasn't fully aware. So my ECOs were lacking in that aspect simply because, not because I couldn't write the ECO, but simply because I didn't know the company well enough. And you just gain that through experience. So it, in my opinion, it just takes some time to know the environment. Once you know the environment pretty well, or at least you have some grasp of what's going on there in terms of procedures, products, and design functions and intent, um, it will just help or make the ECO process a lot simpler and a lot easier and more timely. I know I could have gone in more detail for certain components in this video, but uh, feel free to ask me questions down below. I'll be more than glad to uh, try to help uh, answer your question if you do have any questions. Well, that's all I got for this video, so I'll see you in the next one.